This video is proudly sponsored by Jagex. That's right, today I'm getting sponsored to talk about one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, very exciting news. Elementary school Ian would not believe it. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you, the viewer, already have a general idea of what RuneScape is. It is a massively multiplayer online RPG that has been around for a really long time. In fact, Guinness World Records has it as the world's largest and most updated free-to-play MMORPG, and uh, that doesn't really surprise me. This is the original version of RuneScape. This is what it looked like when I first started playing. It may seem a bit goofy now, but it was mind-blowing for me at the time. I couldn't believe other people were playing and talking to me. It was crazy. It was my first MMO experience, and it was a great one. This version of the game was launched in 2001 and lasted until it was replaced by RuneScape 2 in March 2004. RuneScape 2 wasn't just an expansion, it was a complete rebuild of the entire game, visuals and all. I was playing a ton of RuneScape at this point of my childhood. Uh, I still remember walking into elementary school one day and my dad lecturing me about how I was playing too much RuneScape. It was a bit of an addiction. This version of the game lasted for a while, and it's the version that I think a lot of people envision when they think about RuneScape. In July 2008, we got the RuneScape High Detail update. This wasn't a remake of the game, but instead a graphics option that you could toggle on and off. Now, this is the last huge update that I really remember. I was starting to lose interest after this, not necessarily because of the HD update, uh, but I've been playing for a long time and other games were coming around, just kind of the natural cycle of interest of video games. You know how it goes. In July 2013, RuneScape 3 came out, and it is the current version of the game. I've played a little bit of this one, but it's mostly alien to me. The entire game has been rebuilt, again, and I didn't even mention the entirely controversial Evolution of Combat update, which completely changed how the game was played. For better or worse, RuneScape became an entirely different game than the one that I grew up playing. Now this version still could be good on its own merits, I don't really know. Uh, all I know is that it's not what I think of when I want to play RuneScape. So here we have three majorly different versions of RuneScape, which have now become known as RuneScape Classic, Old School, and 3. Today we're going to be talking about the current version of Old School RuneScape. Basically, in 2013, just months after RuneScape 3's official release date, Jagex realized that people really wanted to play the older version of the game again. So they found an old backup of the RuneScape source code from 2007, put it back up on the internet, and they've been regularly updating it ever since, this time trying not to stray too far from the style of game that everyone fell in love with back in the day. It's got expansions like Cabos Lowlands, Xerix Chambers, Theater of Blood, and the newly released Grandmaster Quest Song of the Elves, which is the final part of a quest line that started all the way back in 2002. Complete all eight parts and you get access to the elven city of Priftindas. 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 <laughs> Uh, just a heads up, I can't correctly pronounce anything in this game because there's no voice acting and I can't read, so uh, just a heads up. I think my favorite update outside of them bringing back the wilderness has been Old School RuneScape Mobile. Now you can log in and play on most iOS and Android devices via a free app, and that's just as awesome as it sounds. In fact, aside from when I stream the game, I've been playing exclusively on my iPad or on my phone, either at home or sometimes I'll log in while I'm on a bus or at the airport or waiting in line or something so I can fish a few more lobsters. It is now my favorite way to play the game, and I really appreciate having a game on my phone that's not watered down or overly mobile game E uh, is just RuneScape, and that's what I love about it. If you'd like to try out old school RuneScape Mobile and receive a free week of membership benefits, which gets you access to a ton of extra content, check out the link in my description. Old School Room.
RuneScape, which I'll also just start calling RuneScape from here on out, is an MMO with all of the typical MMO bells and whistles. You got your skills, you got your quests, you've got trading and killing and swords, I guess. Uh, for as excited as I am to be talking about this game finally, I'm equally intimidated. There's a lot of content to explore, and even though I've been playing for years and years, I've still only seen a small fraction of it. So don't look at this video as a full review of old school RuneScape. This is just me casually talking to you for a bit about one of my favorite games. If you take a look at my stats, you can learn a little bit about my character right off the bat. Firstly, I am weak. <laughs> These are pretty low stats, honestly, not just in my combat, but across the board. Keep in mind that this is not my original account either, it's actually my most recent. So just, you know, don't be too judgmental about my stats, I'm insecure about them, okay? Also, you'll notice that I have an affinity for a few select skills, while some others are largely ignored. I'm what I'm gonna call a forever noob veteran. Uh, I've been playing for a really long time, but I'm still doing the exact same things that I was doing when I first started. So just keep that in mind as you watch this video. I have an intense love for the game while still only understanding about a fraction of it. If you're looking for some more in-depth detail about late game content, uh, you might wanna look at a different video. Fishing is one of my all-time favorite skills, and as you can see, that is still very much the case. Out of all the things I like to do in RuneScape, this one is the most chill and the easiest to do while multitasking. All that you have to do is make sure you're holding the right equipment and click on a, uh, fishy fish spot. There's something really relaxing about fishing in video games. I guess fishing in real life would also be relaxing if it didn't come with the chaos of actually catching something. I always just feel so bad for the fish. But I've got some really good memories attached to fishing in RuneScape, uh, specifically on Karamja Island. Karamja is unique in that it has some of the only lobster, swordfish, and tuna fishing spots for free players. The other spots are located in the dangerous wilderness, so the docks of Karamja are very popular for fishing. And it's just a fun place to hang out and to do something together as a group of unfamiliar fishermen. I also really love the Fisherman's Guild, but I can't really get in there to show it to you just yet because I'm not high enough level on this account. It's got a huge variety of fish to catch and it's right next to a bank, so primo spot but you gotta be level 68, so I have a ways to go. Cooking is also a huge favorite of mine, though it's a little more hands-on than fishing. You cook food a lot faster than you can catch it, so that means you end up running back and forth between the bank and the range more often. Back when I was first playing, I was really obsessed with making pizza. There are four different types of pizza that you can make, uh, but they all take a really long time and a number of different ingredients to prepare, so I don't think that anyone actually makes them, because it's not really a smart use of your time. I've never taken the time to learn how to do things with max efficiency in this game. Some people are really concerned with getting the most out of every second that they invest in RuneScape. I'm more concerned with doing things in a way that's fun for me, and taking it easy, and just being chill. I think that's why I like fishing so much, it's just really relaxing. I was actually determined to reach level 99 in both fishing and cooking back in the day. I never got there, but I still got time, I'm still playing. If you're working on leveling up your skills, or maybe you're just killing a specific type of enemy, you might come across a clue scroll, which I think is my favorite part of the whole game. Clue scrolls alone make getting membership worth it for me. I love them that much. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's a little scroll with a clue on it. As you follow the clues, you come across more scrolls with more clues until eventually you get a box with a random prize inside. This, this, <laughs> this one was not very good. Uh, just a bunch of junk in here. But there you have a clue scroll, it's basically a treasure hunt mixed with some random chance at the end, so it's no surprise that they're one of my favorite things. Now 
let's talk about quests, because I really love the quests in this game, which is kind of rare. Out of all the MMOs that I've played, I think RuneScape has my favorite quests. And I say that because, while I can remember some objectives of quests from other MMOs, I don't think that I could tell you the story of any of them. But when it comes to RuneScape, I, I can actually remember the stories of the quests from RuneScape. And since I played on a free-to-play account for a really long time starting out, I remember a lot of these free quests here. Some of my favorites are Vampire Slayer, where you would go and kill a vampire that's resting in an eerie mansion. In the quest Witch's Potion, you gather ingredients to, well, help a witch make a potion. I don't know why I thought that was such an exciting premise back in the day, but I do remember thinking it was funny that tomato and cheese spawn next to the witch's cauldron for some reason. And of course, we can't forget about Demon Slayer. I was so excited to finish this quest the first time. Nowadays, it feels like a lot of busy work and talking to people that bother me, but the final fight with Delrith is still worthwhile. In some MMOs, it can feel like quests are just another skill that you're mindlessly grinding out and that the story doesn't really matter, but RuneScape actually asks you to get involved with the characters, and if you don't pay attention, it's pretty easy to get lost. But of course, if you get stuck on one of the quests, you can always look up a guide on one of the many RuneScape wiki pages out there. Uh, the RuneScape wikis are actually kind of nostalgic for me, just on their own. I spent a lot of time on there. Something else I'd like to talk about involves this little helmet icon next to my name. My account is what's known as an Iron Man account. This is a setting that you can choose when setting up your character on Tutorial Island, and it restricts your access to features like trading or buying and selling items on the Grand Exchange. Basically, it boils down to I can't get items from other players through trading, drop trading, the Grand Exchange, none of that. If I need something in the game, I have to get it myself. This has been a really fun new way to play the game, and it forces you to experience more of what RuneScape has to offer, which is great for players like me who got fixated on one or two skills the first time around. I will say, though, that part of what I love about RuneScape is the interaction with other players, and I'm finding that I'm missing out by not engaging in the game's economy. Part of the fun of leveling up a skill is being able to obtain something that people want to buy and selling it to make some money. As an Iron Man, I can't buy or sell items, which makes money take on a whole different role in the game, and I just haven't decided how I feel about it yet. Plus, it's just easier to level up if you can trade. I mean, I know that's the entire point of the Iron Man mode, some added challenge, but I'm having a real tough time leveling my magic on this account. You need runes to cast spells, uh, normally you buy runes on the Grand Exchange, but since I can't do that, I have to make my own runes, which is its own whole process that I do enjoy, but it's very time consuming. I like the challenge of doing things myself. I like the special armor that you get. I like that I get an icon by my name that lets everyone know that I'm better than they are, but I really miss trading on the Grand Exchange. Enough to where I'm actually considering turning off Iron Man on this account. Making this video has made me very nostalgic for buying and selling items to other players. Mm, I gotta think about it a bit longer though. I don't want to make any impulse decisions because you can turn off Iron Man at any time. But you can only become an Iron Man on Tutorial Island when you're making your character. So uh, turning it off is a big decision. I would say that new players probably shouldn't consider Iron Man mode too much. Uh, it's more for returning players that are looking for a bit of a challenge. So what is it that makes old school RuneScape so alluring? How has it managed to keep me coming back after all this time? I don't know. I don't know. It's a question I sought to answer while working on this video, but honestly, I'm just not sure. Plenty of games have come and gone since RuneScape's initial release, but it still got me logging in. Is it the graphics? I mean, I know that might sound like a bit of a joke, but I actually do really enjoy the visual style of this game. I find the low polygon count charming, though maybe a little bland in the color department. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Alone in the Dark. 
Also, I really enjoy the simplicity of everything. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe the allure is that although the depth is there, the game appears very simple and very approachable. And then there's the music. Oh, the music is fantastic. It's what I've been using for background music this entire video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have actually got a couple of RuneScape vinyls because I'm number one RuneScape fan. I really love the sound effects too. So the year is 2019, should you be playing old school RuneScape? Well, you already know that I'm going to say yes. Uh, I don't think that it's going to be everyone's cup of tea, but old school RuneScape has a lot to offer anyone looking for an MMO, especially if you want one that you can carry around with you. And hey, if you used to play RuneScape back in the day and this video has got you feeling all nostalgic, now is the time to dive back in. If you're concerned about the price, try and not sweat it too much. There is a ton of content that is free to play without actually needing to purchase a member's subscription. I played F2P for years. Also, remember that if you'd like a taste of members' benefits for free, you can download the Old School RuneScape app and redeem a one-week free membership trial with the link in the description of this video. Or visit osrs.game slash brutalmoose. Thanks again so much to Jagex for sponsoring this video. It was a literal dream come true to get paid to talk about Osurs, literally one of my favorite games of all time. If you're interested in seeing more RuneScape content from me, you should check out my stream archive channel because RuneScape falls in and out of rotation over there. And if you have any fond memories of playing RuneScape that you would like to share, or if maybe you'd like to talk about a part of the game that I didn't talk about, I would love for you to join in the discussion down in the comment section of this video. Did your parents call it RunScape 2? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will be back with something different sometime soon.